Okay, this is podcast number one for the um, standard 4.2, which is all about the circulatory system and the excretory system. So in this standard, you will be able to describe how the circulatory system transports molecules around the body. You'll be able to identify the major structures that are involved with excretion. And you'll distinguish the specific roles of the kidneys and liver um, and the roles that they play with the excretory system. Okay, so some of this is from uh, basic vocab that you've probably heard before, like heart, arteries, veins. Um, there may be some new words in here, so we will be working through these vocab words throughout the podcast. So your circulatory system, the function of the circulatory system is to transport water, nutrients, and waste to and from the cells of the body. So its main function is for transport. Um, it will transport nutrients that come from the digestive system. It will transport oxygen, carbon dioxide, to and from the lungs. Um, that's part of your respiratory system. And it will transport excess materials and waste to your excretory system. So when you think about how things get moved around your body, they get moved around your body through your circulatory system. Um, and that is basically because of the components that make up your circulatory system allow this to happen. So your circulatory system has three main parts. First parts are the blood vessels. These are the routes through which the blood is going to travel. So this is how the blood gets to all the different parts of your body. You have millions of miles of blood vessels running throughout your body um, to reach um, every single cell that will need nutrients and need to get rid of waste. Your heart is going to pump or push the blood throughout the body. And then the blood itself is going to be carrying the important stuff that is needed through the body. That stuff could include oxygen, different kinds of nutrients, and waste products. Um, so your blood carries all of that, that stuff through the blood vessels, and the heart is pumping it out to the places it needs to go. So we're going to start by taking a look at your blood vessels. Your blood vessels basically are one-way streets. They resemble long, skinny tunnels, and they are found all throughout your body. Um, so you have two basic main kinds, and then there's a third smaller one. So you have your arteries and your veins. And this picture is just showing you that they are found everywhere, all throughout your body. You've got arteries and veins going all the way. And they are um, only going to have blood flow through them in one direction. Um, the three types of blood vessels that we are going to talk about are your arteries, your capillaries, and your veins. Um, and typically I write them in the structure this way because the arteries send blood to the capillaries, the capillaries send blood to the veins. Um, and blood always flows in that direction, it never goes back the other way. Okay, so let's start by talking about your arteries. Arteries typically carry oxygenated blood um, and they're going to carry blood away from the heart to all the parts of the body. So one of the ways that we can remember arteries and what they do is arteries carry blood away, and they both start with A. Um, the aorta is the largest artery in your body, and it leads directly from the heart to, um, and then branches out into smaller and smaller arteries um, that go all throughout your body. So um, the aorta can be um, extremely thick and large in some animals. In you guys, it's probably about maybe half an inch in diameter. Um, and it takes a tremendous amount of pressure because blood is pumping into it directly from the heart. The pulmonary artery is another one. And this um, artery is special because it's actually carrying blood that only has a little bit of oxygen in it. Um, and it's going to carry that um, away from the heart over to the lungs. And that blood needs to get over to the lungs because we need to drop off the carbon dioxide and pick up more oxygen. But arteries are always carrying blood away. So even though this one has only a little oxygen in it, and arteries usually have a lot, um, but the pulmonary artery is going to the lungs. So pulmonary means lungs. Okay, so here are some of the major arteries that you will find in your body. You don't need to learn all of them, but you can see that they're just kind of, they snake around to all the different parts of your body, everywhere that you need to go. Places where you can check pulses. You've got pulses that you can check in your um, wrists, in your um, neck. And that is because as your heart pumps, it's pumping the blood out, and it actually, you can feel that pumping in these different arteries throughout your body. Okay, you have your veins next. Veins carry deoxygenated blood back to the heart. So they're carrying blood typically that is low in oxygen. 
Um, the pulmonary vein is the only one that's going to carry blood that is high in oxygen because it's carrying the blood directly from the lungs right back to the heart. Um, but all other veins tend to carry blood that is low in oxygen. The main vein in the body is the vena cava. There is a superior portion, and this is going to carry blood um, from the top part of your body back to the heart. And the inferior um, vena cava is going to carry blood from all the parts that are below your body back up to the heart. But all veins are going to carry blood to the heart, and remember arteries carry blood away from the heart. Okay, so in the next picture we'll look at, oh sorry, in this one, sorry, the uh, vena cava does branch off into lots and lots of smaller veins, which will eventually connect up with the capillaries, which will connect to the arteries. So we'll take a look at that in just a minute. Um, so here are lots in, of the veins that you'll find throughout your body. Okay, they always show them in blue, and the blue is supposed to indicate um, low blood oxygen, but it doesn't mean that your blood is actually blue. It's just a way of showing this in a graphic. You actually don't have any blue blood in your body. It's always red. Um, blood with a lot of oxygen is bright red. Blood with very little oxygen is just a darker red. But they show it the difference in the pictures by making the veins blue and the arteries red. All right, third type is your capillaries. These are the third type of blood vessels. These are the smallest of the blood vessels. Um, and they are, one of their jobs is to connect veins and arteries together. So the blood pumps into the arteries uh, through the capillaries and then collects back into the veins. Um, some capillaries are only one cell wide, so they're super, super, super tiny. And this is why you have millions of miles of blood vessels in your body because these little capillaries are found everywhere, all over the place. Um, in your body, you've got these tiny, tiny, tiny little capillaries. They're so small that you oftentimes cannot see them. Um, they are able to carry oxygen and nutrients directly to the cells of the body, so they're kind of connected, in a sense, right with the cells, and that stuff can diffuse, the oxygen and nutrients can diffuse right to the cells, and the waste products can diffuse back into the blood. Um, so it's a really close connection that happens between your capillaries and the cells of your body. So they'll drop off nutrients and they'll pick up waste like carbon dioxide and ammonia, um, and then those waste products can get to the right parts of the body so they can be excreted. Okay. Um, capillaries work by diffusion, so small molecules, remember we talked about small molecules that have no charge, well they can diffuse through the capillary wall to get in and out of the blood. So here are your capillaries, and you can have little oxygen molecules, right, they're diffusing out, okay, and they're going out to the tissues that need that oxygen in order to get the energy that they require. Um, and also you can see here that they are connecting the arteries to the veins. So their two main jobs, they are going to be getting all the nutrients and waste to and from the cells, and they're also connecting the arteries and veins, but they're super, super small. Okay. The second structure we're going to talk about is the heart. The heart has four chambers or compartments to it. There's two upper chambers. They are called the atria, and that's plural, so if it ends in A, atria. So there's a left atrium and a right atrium, but you have two atria. The lower chambers, you have a left ventricle and a right ventricle. Okay, um, And blood is going to flow through these different chambers in a very um, distinct way. Um, blood doesn't just kind of flow freely, it always goes in one direction, so we're going to take a look at the direction through which the blood will flow through these chambers. Okay, so let's just take a look really quickly at a picture of the heart. So when we talk about the chambers of the heart, you know, a lot of us think of a heart as being this shape. That's not really what the heart looks like. This is what the heart looks like. Um, so your two upper chambers are a lot smaller. Here are your two chambers. And then your two lower chambers are a lot bigger. Now, if you look at this and you're looking at the picture, and this says that this is the left atrium, and you're like, but wait a minute, that's my right? Anytime we talk about body parts, we talk about the direction that they're in as they would be in you. So if you were to place this heart in your body, this would be on the left side of your heart. Um, so your left atrium would up here, and there's a valve that is between the left atrium and the left ventricle. So blood would flow down into the left ventricle, and then that blood would flow up through this valve and out the aorta, and it would go all the way out to your whole body. And then it would come back in through the vena cava and down into your right atrium, down through this valve into your right ventricle, and then back out here is going to the lungs. 
So we go out through the pulmonary artery to the lungs, and then we're going to come back from the lungs and back into the left atrium. So the flow of blood is kind of happening in this direction, so we're going to take a closer look at that flow of blood. All right, so blood with very little oxygen is coming from the vena cava, and this is coming in and collecting from the body, and it is going right into the right atrium right here. So the blood's flowing down into here, and this is coming from the lower part of the body into the right atrium. That blood is going to flow through this valve into the right ventricle, and then from there it's going to pump out through this valve here, and it's going to go to either one of the lungs. So there's two lungs, so this pulmonary artery is now going to grab that blood and bring it over the lungs so that lungs can pick up the oxygen that is needed. Okay, so it comes in through the vena cava, down to the right, ventri right atrium, right ventricle, and then over to the pulmonary um, artery, and then we can get to the lungs. Once the blood goes to the lungs and picks up all the oxygen that it needs, it has to come back to the heart before it will get pumped out to the body because the lungs are not a muscle that can pump blood. Um, so they have to be able to get the blood back around and out to the body. So the oxygenated blood that we just got from the lungs is now going to come back into the heart through the pulmonary veins. It's going to go into the left atrium and then down to the left ventricle. That blood will then get pumped out through this valve here. This is the aortic valve out into the aorta. And then the blood will go out to the rest of the body and give off all of its oxygen and pick up waste. And then the blood ends up coming back around through the vena cava. And it's a complete circuit and a complete loop. Um, so the aorta is going to just branch off over and over again until it gets to the smallest possible capillaries, drop everything off, pick up all the waste, then the blood is in the veins, and then it comes back around. So that's our complete circuit for um, basically how the blood flows through the heart. Okay. The last component of the circulatory system is your blood. Um, your blood has four major components to it. There is the plasma. The plasma is the liquid part of the blood. The liquid part of the blood, it's mostly water, um, and it's going to carry nutrients around and waste that needs to be transported by the body. So all this stuff is going to be found in your plasma. You have red blood cells that um, your blood is made of. Main job of red blood cells is to carry oxygen to all the parts of the body. And it does this because it has a special protein on it called hemoglobin. And hemoglobin works with iron to carry that oxygen around. Um, and that's actually what makes your cells have that red color. That's why your blood has a red color, is the hemoglobin interacting and the oxygen interacting with the iron. Okay. You have white blood cells also. White blood cells are going to fight and kill germs that may enter your bloodstream. Okay, We talked about them, how they can go over, some of them can grab onto um, a pathogen that gets in your body and actually engulf it by endocytosis and kill it. Other ones send out special chemicals called antibodies that will kill living things that come into your body. Okay, but their job is to fight off diseases so that you stay in homeostasis and don't get too sick. And then finally, you have your platelets. Platelets look kind of gross. They're what are going to form your scabs when you cut yourself, um, and they're going to help you to stop bleeding. And basically, what they are are little pieces of red blood cells. Um, and so when you get a cut or something, they mix with some protein and they will clog up the area that was cut and they will make the bleeding stop. So platelets are really important and so are the proteins that get made that are involved in that. Um, somebody who has like hemophilia doesn't make the right proteins and then they have a hard time clotting their own blood.